Okay guys, today is Jeep day, again. Yes, again. I was underneath the Jeep. I knew I needed U-joints on the axle side, on the passenger side. I was in my driveway, jacked it up, and I wanted to just check the ball joints, wheel bearings, stuff like that, because from tearing out the axles, I was thinking to myself, I might as well just check everything, whatever needs replaced, I'll just do it then. And I checked this side, and check this out. Oh yeah. It's good. Real nice. So, it looks like the wheel bearing, but I bought ball joints, wheel bearings, and U-joints for the axles, and enough to rebuild even my spare axles. That Currently the U-joints are shot in as well. So I'm gonna get into this video, and I guess kind of do a tutorial on how to do U-joints, ball joints, wheel bearings. But I'm gonna dig into this, and whatever I feel like I need to cover, I'm gonna cover, so it's gonna kind of be a how-to, but might be mixed in with some other good stuff. Before I get into any of the Jeep, I'm gonna go over and get some coffee, get myself refueled, and then we will get right into it. So give me a couple minutes, we'll start tearing into this Jeep. Okay, here we go. Hardest decision is always, which one do I want? I'll try this, this blend right here. Give it a shot. Look at how hot that is. Coffee's done, time to review it. <sighs> One cup's never enough. Let's do it again. You know you're really tired and ready for coffee, you just inhale it, and that's what I normally do. Check this out. Mm. If I could get an IV coffee drip and function throughout the day, totally would. There it is. Get you guys situated up here. There we go. Okay, now ball joints, U joints, all of that stuff was always a huge stressful event for me way back when I just started wrenching. And a lot of that was because of lack of knowledge where I just didn't, didn't know how things went together, didn't know what to expect. So it's actually a pretty easy process. And a lot of this I'm just gonna time lapse. But you obviously rip off your wheel. There's just five lug nuts there. Anybody can do that. Pull that off. Then you'll have to pop your caliper off. Pull your hub out, which is only three bolts. They use a little 12 point socket. And you can then slide your axle shaft out. And then we can tear into the ball joints. None of it is overly complicated, but I think that we tend to overcomplicate stuff, especially like I said, when we're first getting into this kind of stuff. And that's why I thought this might be kind of a valuable video, but I don't know, maybe you guys will just scroll by it. But either way, Let's do this, I'm gonna time lapse this, and then I'll talk when I feel like I need to talk.
So up to this point, nothing here is crazy. I just unbolted the caliper. The caliper on my Jeep is a little half inch socket. It's two bolts, just standard looking bolts here. Notice how mine are coated in anti-seize. It's probably been, I don't know, two years since I did brakes. Still coated, looking nice. I do that so the bolts don't get stuck in the caliper. But here, check out this slot. So that's the wheel bearing, definitely sloppy. So I'm absolutely replacing the wheel bearing. And then I'm gonna take you over to the other side and show you the sloppy U-joint. The U-joint on this side seems tight, but I'm gonna replace them both. Okay, I'm hopeful I can show you this. Hopefully you can see. This bearing feels tight, but check this U-joint. So sloppy. So definitely doing the U-joint. Now these ball joints, upper and lower on this side, felt tight. I normally replace them in sets, so we'll see. I, I'm probably gonna replace everything. I'm mostly gonna show you guys tearing apart the other side though. So over here on this side, you need a, let's see, this is a 13 millimeter, little 12 point socket. I don't know if you can see that. There's three bolts on the back of each hub and you just gotta pop them off. They're kind of, kind of weird to get to, but they should come out. If, you, if it's been a while since you've done this, <clears throat> your hub might get stuck inside. That's the only downside. That's why I always anti-seize all my stuff. Okay, so here's one of these bolts. It's just a, a normal bolt here, pretty big, about three inches long, has a 12 point head on it. Okay, there's number two. So right there's bolt number three. Now this hub, I already have the nut and I have the uh, little castle cover, cotter pin, all that stuff out. So this should just come out. So there we go. I'm just gonna push the center of the axle out. Yeah, that feels terrible. That is so bad. Jeez, I cannot believe I didn't notice that. But it's probably honestly the diesel motor making all that noise clacking that made me not realize that my wheel bearing took a dump. But it's bad. Like I can barely spin that by hand. It's that hard. So yeah, that was about to fly apart. It's good. Inside of your axle tubes, you have seals. And we wanna be very careful when we're pulling out the axle itself. So normally I just have my hand in the back here and I'm trying to keep the back end of the axle up. Super easy on this side because this is the short stubby side. As you're pulling out and putting back in that axle shaft, you have to be very careful of that seal. You can destroy it very easily. So again, I'm just gonna slide this out, kind of support it as it comes out. There we go. So there we have it. There's your little stubby shaft. So now at this point is when I can remove the castle nut from both the upper and lower ball joint. And it should take pretty considerable force to knock this knuckle off, but it shouldn't be a crazy amount. Normally a mallet will just pop it loose for me. And I can knock that out of the way and get to work on these ball joints. Okay, this is the last bolt here. Now let's try to pop this hub out. Here we go. So let's just guide this out very slow, keeping upward. Here we go. All right, and I had already felt it come out of the seal, so now we're good. So much slop, so garbage. So now at this point, I'm gonna pull the cotter pins out of the castle nuts and then pop those castle nuts off. Got it. Cotter pins can sometimes be the biggest pain in the butt of this whole entire job. It's funny how it's sometimes the little stuff that just completely screws everything up. Now I'm gonna pop the casting nut off the bottom. Now leave that nut on the bottom. Because when we beat this knuckle down, we wanna have a nut somewhere so that we can catch it. This bottom nut, 
was bottom nut's a 32 millimeter. A 15 16 fits pretty good, so we're gonna try that. There we go. So that's loose. Like I said, I'm just gonna loosen these nuts a little bit and then we'll get a mallet and we'll pop this thing down. So I showed you that for a reason. Notice when I was beating down on it, I didn't really get any traction. I didn't really get, didn't really get far at all. If you hit right here where the actual stud goes through the knuckle, sometimes you can vibrate it loose. It worked out great. Now I just gotta pop these nuts off. And as you can see, that's why I kept the nuts kind of down a little bit. Just enough room that it could pop it loose but not slam on the ground. Sometimes you have to put some up pressure on the knuckle because you'll actually be spinning the stud in the ball joint. I just had to do that. I was trying to loosen the nut, but it was spinning that stud. It's little things like this that are so frustrating the first time you do ball joints. There we go. Let's get that knuckle out of the way. All right, now we have the knuckle off. Now we need to use the ball joint press. You're essentially finding sockets big enough to go over the ball joint on one side that it can give it room to clear through, but small enough that they rest on this ledge where the ball joint is pressed into so that we can press it out. So I'm gonna figure that out off camera, get everything set up, and then I'll show you the process. Okay guys, so here I have the ball joint press. Now the top ball joint is pressed down to be installed, up to be disassembled and taken out. So I found this three quarter inch drive socket laying around the shop. It's big enough in the bottom that it allows the stud to pass through. So I have enough room. Got this cap that came with the ball joint kit and this big socket that fits around the top. Because what we want to do is allow enough clearance in this top to allow the ball joint to come up through. But this socket has to be small enough that it's sitting on the ledge of the ball joint and pushing up. So I'm going to put it on the camera, get some glasses on and find the right socket for this, get some leverage on it, and let it rip and see if I can pop this out. All right, now we're just gonna tighten it down like we're tightening a bolt, just under a lot more pressure. All right, so that ball joint looks like it has been pressed up. So now we'll loosen this out. Normally they pop pretty loud. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, there we go. One ball joint out. Piece of cake, right? Nothing to be stressed about. Let's do the bottom one. Okay, on the bottom one here, we're gonna be pushing straight down so I have a socket that's big enough that the ball joint can fall through. I feel like this one's gonna be a lot tighter. We're gonna find out and see how that works. There's no grease fitting on the top of this, so I'm just pushing straight down with the stud. We're gonna see how that works. I just have a feeling this one's gonna be a lot tighter, but we'll see. Not bad at all. All right, I don't know if you noticed, but I had to put the threaded part of the ball joint press through the top of the knuckle where the upper ball joint goes. So when I'm disassembling, I normally do top and then bottom. When I'm reassembling, I do bottom and then top. If that makes sense, hopefully that makes sense. So again, this socket was big enough that the ball joint could fall down into it. It has a hole so the stud can stick out the bottom. It's details like that. Hopefully I'm conveying it well. So we got our upper ball joint out up here, lower ball joint out. I'm gonna clean up this whole knuckle. And once it's cleaned up and I kind of wipe out all the rust and stuff from inside, then we'll show you the install on this side. One thing to note, there is oil leaking out. You're gonna get oil from your differential flooding down through your axle shaft. One way you can combat that is do one side at a time and have this side up higher and then gravity is going to keep the oil out. I wanted to just get both done. So, needless to say, I've got oil leaking. 
you're not gonna lose that much, but I try to not screw around too much and then I do check the level at the end. Got the new ball joints in my hands here. So this is greasable, that's kind of cool. So now what I'm looking for is a socket that's big enough to slide over like this, but small enough that it keeps pressure on the ball joint. We're gonna to try to start these off very square. That's such a big deal. Do not start them crooked. You will completely screw yourself if you do. I need a big enough one up top that it's gonna allow everything to pass through. Flat. I'm gonna put a flat bar in here. There we go. So that's seated in. Now let's pull this all apart and make sure everything is square and the way it should be. Use my flashlight and just look all the way around the edge. Make sure everything's up against. Yep. Okay. So we are good to go there. Super easy. So here all I did to get the top in was have a big socket on the bottom, big socket on the top, flat plate, and I pushed it down like that. So now the top's done on this side. Okay, now we got the new ball joints in. Now we can rotate our knuckle over and begin to get that into place. Top nut on, and we're gonna use the top one to tighten down. Let's figure out what size this is. Slowly pulling it up, it's probably hard to tell. cotter pin. Slap that in quick. Alright, so I got my cotter pin in. Everything's solid. This is interesting. This ball joint has a grease fitting capability like the other one, but instead of being somewhere that makes sense, they gave me this little elbow that I guess they think is gonna work. There's no way that's gonna impact my U-joint. So I'm probably gonna just have to grease this thing once it's installed and cap it and call it a day, unfortunately. 
But I got two cotter pins in one bag. That's a win. So one bad thing I'm seeing is this moved ball joint, this upper one, even after everything's tightened down, is sloppy. So that was the one that was easy to put in with just a hammer. So I'm gonna have to see if Advance Auto has another one or something, because that just doesn't seem right. It's so sloppy. Probably can't see it on the camera, but that's really frustrating. I'm gonna have to probably get another one. I do not want stuff flying apart. Okay, I popped the knuckle back off because this is just too loose. Look at that. Pop it out the hand. So that's not gonna fly. So this is definitely out of spec. Okay guys, I'm back. I grabbed a new ball joint, replaced the other one. We put my micrometer on it and it was a couple hundred thousandths out of spec. It was noticeably out of spec. So hopefully this new one that I got, same brand, Moog, problem solver. I don't know, hopefully this one doesn't give me the same issues, but we're about to find out. All right, so it's already tighter, I can tell. The other one would drop in until it might have had a 32nd of an inch of clearance, and I could just kind of smack it with my hand. I'm still gonna just try it with a, a mallet and see if I can get it in. Okay, that's way better, way better. Yeah, the other one, as you guys saw, was just sloppy with rock in the knuckle when I was wiggling it. That is not good. So we're good there now. Okay guys, at this point I have ball joints done on both sides of the Jeep. So now I need to move on to my axle shafts. I'm gonna push out those U-joints over here on the bench vise. Show you guys how I do that. Reinstall the axles, put the new hubs in, and we'll be ready to roll. Like I said, this is probably the scarier part that people are, are nervous about is the ball joints. The rest of it is very straightforward. Um, doing U-joints on an axle isn't fun, but it's also usually not super complicated but sometimes you get U-joints that you just you end up fighting like crazy. So hopefully we don't run into that. Hopefully it goes pretty easy. But yeah, everything's greased up. Everything's solid. That new ball joint was definitely better than the other one. But yeah, if you ever are installing ball joints and it's loose like that, stop, go get the correct ones. You definitely do not want your ball joints flying apart while you are driving. That would be a bad day. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Nothing to be stressed about. Yeah, ball joints can kind of intimidate people, especially the first time that you embark on the journey of switching out your own, but it's really not something that you have to be that stressed out about. Now, what I'm gonna say is, this video ran on way longer than I had originally planned. Originally, I was gonna show you guys replacing the U-joints on my axles right after doing the ball joints. I was gonna make it into one video. It would have been like 40 minutes, and this video was already long enough, so I'm ending it here. There's gonna be a part two, so stay tuned. In the next week or two, I'm gonna drop that video. It's gonna be all centered around replacing the U-joints on your axles. And I think there's a lot of good information. Hopefully there was good information in this video, and I appreciate you guys for sticking it out and, you know, fighting through those 20 plus minute videos. I talk a lot. I'm really trying to learn how to keep them short, but I'm also getting a lot of good feedback from people saying that I'm putting out a lot of good info. I'm gonna keep trying to do that. We're gonna keep cranking out these videos. Guys, I appreciate you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think and let me know how you think I'm doing. I appreciate you guys. Until next time, stay well, stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next video.